Alrighty guys, as you can tell, the outer part is already fiberglassed. So I went in as thin strips right here. This is where the cracked piece was that went up to about right here. And then a cracked piece that went around right here, about to here. So I put thin, thin strips right here and a thin strip right here. Then I went thicker and thicker and thicker. Basically you got the thing, I was going thicker and thicker. And then once I got that each one was overlapping each other, I just went and cut big sheets and I just laid them in like this, basically like that. And then this one, I put it on and stretched it because I'm using this weave right here. And as you can tell, it's basically four, um, four way stretch kind of way. It's, uh, it moves around. So I was able to kind of go over this kind of corner right here. And uh, yeah, everything just overlapped and I had a few little patches before that I wanted to make sure everything was good. So put a few layers of fiberglass right here and right there. And so far, I believe this is pretty much it that I can tell off the top of my head. But I do notice that there's a spot right here that's cracked. As you can tell right here. It's been repaired here, but there was no mat used there. So I am going to groove that all out up to here. And uh, I'm gonna probably clean this thing up right here and remove that piece and just make it nice and straight and uh, just have that be that way it is. And then uh, that's the only fiberglass I think that's known to be needed to fix. And yeah, pretty much this is how it's gonna pass out. Uh, I'll have to do some sanding here, some nice 80 grit and uh, shave all this down and fine tune it. And then maybe just glaze it lightly just with some resin and uh, see if we can fill in any of the holes. And uh, what I figured out that gets a lot of these bubbles out is using the propane torch right here and uh, actually going over it really quickly a few times. And uh, yeah, it actually helps the bubbles and it kind of seeps in. It liquefies, liquefies it a little bit, but then actually promotes it to harden faster and it sets pretty good. So it's pretty good already. So, uh, so far so good. Wrap up right here for now and then we'll get back to it. And got the seal all peeled up. Got this area fixed up and patched up all the way. So I just gotta do a final sand on it. And that's pretty much it for today. And let's see what else we can do. Continue on another day. So here it is guys, we're working with this JS550 and this is the current state it's at. This is one of the two that we're working on. That's the other one. And this one, I'm getting ready to clean up the in inside of the engine bay. As you can tell, it's been painted before. So we have already applied uh, aircraft remover and it's getting better, but definitely need to work on it some more and clean up and we're going to pressure wash it and we still do have some more fiberglass work to do we gotta finish this area right there and a slight spot somewhere else i think right here we just need to fill up this little spot right here and pretty much we are done and the hood is pretty much all good to go that's sitting right here just need to do some more sanding. So I wanna go ahead and start applying some of this uh, aircraft remover right there. And supposedly it's not doing any harm to the fiberglass. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed with that. So we're gonna go ahead and start brushing it on and then letting it sit, brush it, scrape it, try to get as much of it off because we wanna repaint this insides. And uh, yeah, we pretty much wanna be ready to paint soon. Finished up with 
all the fiberglass work now. We just got slight sanding to do. So we got a little patch right here, had a crack right here, had to groove it all out. And basically I grooved it out. And like any other way to do fiberglass, you start off with a small piece of layer, then you widen it and you widen it. Basically you fill up the whole uh, chamfer or bevel you can call. And as you can kind of see the dark line, see it's thicker in the middle and it's darker. That's where the most of fiberglass is. But other than that, that's pretty much it. And then we had a little rotted spot right here. So we grooved that all out and basically fixed that. Then we had a crack right here, fixed that all. Basically just gotta do some fine tuning sanding, which is not hard since we got some deburring stuff. And basically you rough everything up and then you just go ahead and sand it. And uh, yeah, it turns out to be pretty good. And that's pretty much all for the fiberglass on the hole. And the pole that is laying over here is pretty much good. It's pretty much sanded and ready to go. And uh, yeah, and same as the hood for this ski, as you can tell, it looks smooth and everything. I'm actually very pleased how this area actually turned out. As you can tell, it's pretty smooth. I did some final sanding and then I just went ahead and glazed it with epoxy resin and sealed it again of any low spots or anything. And what I figured to help out really quickly is I used that propane torch right here. And uh, I keep my distance. I put it on one of the like lower settings and then I just go really quickly and it just pulls out all the bubbles and uh, yeah, as you can tell, it's, yeah, it's like smooth like glass. I mean, you can see it just looks um, nice and smooth. But again, we'll finish it off with a DA sander, smooth it all out. So we had a little spot right here. Then I had a little um, sanded out area too much. So I just put, a, put in a fiberglass mat fix this area and then as you can tell this is the nasty part this is where the other big crack was right here kind of went sideways and then across like that but everything is turning out pretty good we just got to do some fine-tuned sanding right here and you can tell I did go ahead and fiberglass the inside right here and every other spot basically that's the hood part fiberglass that went really heavy on the inside since I don't want this hood to crack so I did it does not look the best inside but I will clean it up some let's see if I can turn it up but I will clean it up some more with some grooving tools and like I said, the deburring tools. But other than that, this key is pretty much good to go. Everything is pretty much good. I had to fiberglass some pieces right here, some areas, and that's pretty much finished up. But other than that, this thing is ready to rip. And yeah, other than that, it's already primered, but uh, thinking about it and while I was working on all this and I decided that I am going to do epoxy primer. So I went ahead and ordered all that that should be in here this Saturday. And um, I'm gonna start prepping for that. I'm gonna finish sanding everything with around a 120 grit and just get everything pretty smooth. Got as much of the paint and overspray stuff. And as you can tell, I even got this decal and everything stripped on both sides. So it's pretty much bare to fiberglass. So that's why I wanna coat it with epoxy primer. Just give it a good surface bond and uh, 
since uh, epoxy primer just does not bubble up and it's just so much more durable. It's not very sandable, but my plan is to spray the epoxy primer, let it dry up, and then I'm gonna spray a few coats of uh, sandable primer. So that way we can fill in the imperfections. So we're gonna have a good coat and a good sealer. And uh, yeah, basically just fine tune all this sand. And uh, yeah, should be good to go. So I went ahead to Eastwood and ordered all my material there. And I ordered a quart of epoxy primer, which is one to one mix ratio. So it should give us two quarts. I think it will be plenty for us to get two skis uh, primered. So um, I'm pretty pumped. So if you want to go check out Eastwood, got some fairly good products and they ship really fast and should be here real soon. So today is late Wednesday. It should be here Saturday. So it's pretty quick. And uh, yeah, they have some pretty good deals and, and stuff like that. But other than that, for this ski, we still have to peel up all this resin, which I know a pretty decent way to get this stuff off. I have some of this Hylene, something like that. Um, basically, when you put it on the sticky stuff, it makes the glue kind of rubberish. And then you use like a scraper and that stuff just slides right up. So that's a pretty easy way. And as you can tell, I tested it right here and it cleaned it up pretty good. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and clean all these up and then uh, we'll spray some epoxy primer and then go from there. And this thing should be getting ready for paint. But yeah, this is a long process, it takes a lot of time and once we get the primer on there things will start looking so much better prep work is like key so that's why i want to use some good stuff seal everything up since this ski has been painted before and as you can tell it had some kind of primer on there so i want to get all that sealed up and covered I'm trying to sand as much of that stuff off and all the stuff where it's pretty bonded, I'm just keeping it. But other than that, should be good to go. And we'll seal it all up so that way the paint will be even. There won't be no discoloration in the paint because everything will be primered. Everything's gonna be the same. Nothing needs to be blended. But yeah, guys, if you like this video, stay tuned. I got some great announcements to make, possibly in the next video. Um, so yeah, super pumped. Check out my Instagram. Uh, built to run and uh, Yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. So peace out